Dave Salvin, who is a research associate. Thank you very much, Lindsay, for Thank this you. very nice talk. And um, Americ is a research associate at Gustave Bussy Hospital in Paris. Uh, he performed her university training at Ecole Normale Supérieure of Paris in neuroscience. Then he moved to New York City as a trainee in Miriam Megal Laboratory for one year in order to acquire immunology and marriage cell knowledge. Then he performed his PhD in the Institute Curie in the laboratory of Nicolas Manner, where he focused on the neurotic cell subsets and the AH2 interaction. And then he joined the Florence Gino Laboratory in Singapore, where he performed the study that he will present today that is entitled Dual Ontogeny of Disease Associated Microglia and Disease Inflammatory Macrophages in Aging and neuro Neurodegeneration that was published in Immunity this year. Thank you for joining us today, and we are looking forward to your talk. Thanks a lot to give me the opportunity to present uh, this article. So um, just to, uh, to um, give you uh, an introduction quickly about ontogeny. So uh, just before to start, ontogeny is uh, from where the cells uh, are coming from. And we have to be very careful between ontogeny and state and to not uh, misunderstand. A state is a state that um, any cell can acquire, but the ontogeny is something very rigid. And as a... Uh, uh, Lindsay uh, pre presented to you, microglia is coming from your sac, and this is the ontogeny of microglia. However, uh, macrophages uh, can come from uh, different origin, uh, and uh, there is different type of macrophages in the brain. So, of course, you have the microglia, which is in the parenchyma and uh, coming from your York sac and but you have also other macrophages meningeal macrophages choroid plexus macrophages and perivascular macrophages and these uh, three types of macrophages are uh, regrouped under the name of border associated macrophages the BAM all of them were quite uh, nicely uh, described by Erena Sec, and uh, people were able to identify specific signature for each of them. And uh, many other papers uh, were published describing many other subsets of microglia uh, and macrophages. So, for example, you, uh, you have the famous disease-associated microglia, the DAM, um, um, showed by uh, Karen Scholl, the dark microglia, the lipid droplet accumulating microglia, the proliferative-associated microglia, the CD11C positive microglia, and you can go on and go on. And uh, the difficulty of, um, of this when I started in this field was uh, to fully uh, understand is there some uh, um, microglia that were described, uh, speaking in fact of the same uh, type of microglia, or uh, were they all really so different from each other? So the goal was to find a consensus and to uh, to to fit in reality to to build a map of macrophages in the brain, and. Um, Right now, as you know, since uh, 10 years, single cell rna has been uh, uh, highly uh, used by every scientist. Many studies were published using different types of technology for single cell rna -Sec, but we wanted to build a global map uh, where everyone could rely on it and could check if uh, what they were looking were common to another study, to another type already described to add up uh, function to these cells. So for that, we used um, we used uh, technology. So of course, we generated our own single cell RNA sec uh, in the laboratory, uh, but we also retrieved published single cell RNA sec, and we use a technique which is the integration uh, that allows to uh, integrate multiple data set together in order to build a map. So just to be clear, when you do that you ask your algorithm to find the similarities between each data set. So of course, like um, in this case, it was my study, so it was not uh, such a big deal. But if you do it with patients, for example, you ask the algorithm to find what is common between all your patients. So of course, you will not visualize the 
differences between patients that because of course everyone is different so there is differences but this integration will not focus on that so be careful you need to ask properly your question and to know why you use the algorithm uh, every algorithm is good you just have to really ask the good question and use the good one so we generated this integration of six data sets and uh, we decided, of course, we, uh, we had to give it a name. So we uh, call it Mverse uh, for macrophage verse, uh, universe. Um, to be honest, it's just a name. We don't really care about the name. And um, as you can see, uh, these uh, six data sets were integrated together. And what uh, the amazing thing with integration is that you can build the perfect experiment because as you know uh, most of the lab doesn't have funding uh, that can go uh, forever uh, for unlimited funding for one project so uh, you cannot build the perfect experiment meaning uh, you cannot sequence uh, microglia from um, uh, embryonic time points until uh, mice that are uh, super old plus Alzheimer mice plus uh, different part of the brain uh, so basically by integrating each data set we could address some question with um, one data set so for example Sylvine IS data set was performed in the lab it was an index uh, sort single cell RNA sec index sort means that uh, we recorded the information of uh, um, 16 uh, protein expressed at the surface of the cell at the same time that we did uh, the single cell RNA sec. So we had protein plus RNA information. Sylvine C1 uh, was performed using uh, C1 uh, technology, fluid diagram technology, and we perform embryonic time point until adult time point. And uh, the other uh, data set was very interesting because it contained uh, juvenile mice, so not adult, but before, P, uh, P21 uh, mice, and also contained neurons and uh, astrocytes. And why it was important to have a bit of neurons and astrocytes is that you, whatever technology you, you use, you will um, you will have a bit of contamination and if you have one or two uh, neurons uh, two three astrocytes in your data set if there is no not enough cells they won't form a cluster so by putting the all uh, with astrocyte and neurons we were sure that we would clean up the other data set where it was supposed to be only uh, macrophages uh, finally, AMOND was a data set uh, containing embryonic time point until very old mice, aged mice, one year old or even more, uh, one year and a half. Uh, uh, and uh, Karen Scholl was, of course, the data set of Alzheimer mice and the DAM uh, microglia. And the Van Hoff data set contained also Alzheimer mice, but uh, they also dissected different parts of the brain. Uh, so they had enriched uh, meningeal macrophage, enriched choroid, choroid plexus macrophage. So it was very interesting to see if uh, they increased artificially by dissecting this part, the number of macrophages that they sequenced. So finally, by this integration, we could identify different regions of the Mverse. We could identify the developmental microglia area, as you can see here, and the microglia, embryonic microglia, you can find it here. And what was striking is that after birth, the microglia mature and acquire uh, full, uh, the full uh, expression range uh, of RNA and move towards the mature microglia area. And finally, we could identify the myeloid area, which contains the border-associated macrophage, the monocytes, the neutrophile, and the dendritic cells. And finally, an area that contains neurons and um, astrocytes and one uh, T cells and NK cell. We decided to focus us on the microglia and myeloid cells. 
And um, as I told you before, Karen Scholl published uh, the, uh, the article about the disease associated uh, microglia and gave a signature for these uh, cells. They uh, stated that they were TREM2 dependent and, um, and uh, whatever, many other papers that were published after uh, were discussing the fact that maybe they were not so protective, that in some case they would be, uh, um, they would worsen the disease. And, um, and I was very concerned about all this data. So I decided to take uh, the signature published by Karen Scholl and to apply it on the Karen Scholl data set uh, with the inverse uh, coordinate. And uh, to my big surprise, uh, this signature was um, overexpressed in two area of the inverse. As you can see, one area located more in the developmental microglia area and one uh, in the major uh, microglia. What was striking and what was strange is that here we, it was only mice with Alzheimer, one year old mice. So we were very surprised to see cells in the developmental area. Uh, and we were very surprised to have two areas uh, among the inverse highly expressing this signature. So the question was, where are the real dam that Karen Scholl uh, described? And for that, what we did is that we look, uh, since Karen Scholl stated they are trend 2 dependent, we uh, checked if uh, both of these area were trend 2 dependent. Um, so for that, we look at the Alzheimer mice trend 2 knockout and the trend 2 knockout mice. And as you can see, here, the, uh, this population in the developmental area uh, uh, is increased in Alzheimer mice, uh, decrease in TREM2 knockout, and decrease in TREM2 knockout 5XFAD. So we decided that uh, these cells were behaving like the dam, so we call them dam. However, the other cells highly expressing the dam signature published by Karen Scholl in the major microglia area, uh, when we look at their uh, proportion in uh, TREM2 knockout and in uh, Alzheimer TREM2 knockout mice, we observe that them, they were increased. So clearly they were not the dam and uh, we decided to call them DIMS and I will come back to that, uh, to this name. But however, these DIMS located in the adult microglia area were not TREM2 dependent, they were TREM2 independent. So uh, then what is uh, very uh, interesting is, and what I think is important is we checked the main uh, genes um, express in DAM, so IDGAX. IDGAX was quite specific to DAM and not so much in DIMS, but TREM2 was expressed in both DAM and DIMS. So you see here, it's not because a cell express a protein that the cell state rely on this protein. DAM rely on TREM2 and they express it. DIMS re do not rely on TREM2. However, they do also express TREM2. P2RY12 uh, expression and CX3 uh, CR1 expression was downregulated in DAM and uh, it was less downregulated in DIMS uh, in comparison to DAM. So, here, uh, we verified that the dams that we identified here were also present in the Van Hoff data set that contained also Alzheimer mice. And it was the case, as you can see here. So uh, after that, we were OK. The signature published is not uh, specific enough. We have to establish more specific signature. And for that, what we did is that we uh, performed DEGs for the Vanov dataset, for the Karen Scholl dataset, and we uh, crossed this DEGs list to select a few DEGs that were common to both datasets. And we came out with this 
this dam specific uh, signature. And you can see here the genes that are contained in uh, this signature. And you can see that when we project the expression on the inverse, it's uh, really specific of uh, Vanov and, um, and Kerenchol dam cells. When we look at their proportion in each data set, of course, they increase also in APPPS1, uh, which is another Alzheimer mice model, in the uh, 5XFAD Alzheimer model of Kerenchol, and they decrease in the Alzheimer model with trend to knockout. Uh, finally, what was very interesting for us is that when we look at the other data set, Amand and Sylvine C1, that didn't contain any Alzheimer mice, we observe cells in, this, uh, uh, in the same area. These cells were appearing around E12.5, E14.5, and were disappearing at P14. So it seems that what um, Karen Scholl called disease-associated microglia is a program that is regularly used during embryogenesis by some of the microglia appearing in the brain around E12.5, and uh, this program will disappear after 14 days after birth. And... Um, and we uh, here you can see in the amond fetal data set you can see that you have clearly cells located at the same emplacement that the dam in alzheimer disease mice and these cells express uh, also the dam specific genes and here uh, what uh, so when we started to do bibliography uh, we uh, we observe that ajmayer and uh, Lord Arzik uh, described CD11C positive uh, microglia, but after birth at P7. Uh, and in fact, when we took the Ashmeyer signature and applied it to our Amand and Sylvine C1 data set, the same cells uh, express the Ashmeyer signature. And when we apply the Ashmeyer signature to Vanov and Karen Scholl, who were the data set with Alzheimer mice, the DAM and the DIM started uh, display a highly uh, express uh, gene signature. So uh, suggesting that in fact here, what we are speaking about when we speak about DAM, it's a program uh, that doesn't appear only in disease, uh, in disease, in neurodegenerative disease, but it's a program which is used uh, normally during embryogenesis, and some cells during neurodegenerative will reacquire this program. So this was very um, interesting. And um, in fact, DAM uh, is a fetal-like reprogramming of the cells. And uh, it, it, it goes with the fact that they could really play a protective role uh, in the neurodegenerative disease. So then we, of course, uh, we decided to call these uh, cells that were uh, appearing during embryogenesis not DAM because there is no disease. So we were like, um, we, we, we were thinking about how to call them. Do we call them CD11C positive uh, microglia? Uh, and in fact, since they appear during embryogenesis and remain after birth, we call them use associated uh, microglia. This is again only name. Uh, to be honest, at one point, the field will, um, at one point, all uh, people from the field will decide about a common nomenclature, and this name will disappear, maybe. No big deal. I do not uh, think names are very important. What is important is uh, to make sure that we speak about the same thing or not. Uh, and uh, when we uh, decided to, to compare the YAM and the DAM and what is common and what is uh, specific to these cells, we observe that DAM and YAM, of course, share mitochondrial uh, pathway, uh, autophagy, phagosome, like a regular macrophage uh, pathway. And uh, what was specific to the YAM is uh, mitochondrial activity and uh, lipid metabolism, fatty acid beta oxidation, TCA cycle, glutathion redox uh, reaction, ketogenesis. So it seems that they have a particular metabolism and the dam do not have this uh, particular metabolism. But however, what do they overexpress is uh, uh, immunoregulation pathway. Uh, 
Uh, and uh, that's why we do think that they are indeed uh, protective. Uh, and uh, when uh, we decided, of course, to focus on the other population, the DIMS, and when we look at the DIMS, what was uh, very nice is that we could find them in among data set, very old mice, Karen Scholl in Alzheimer mice, and also in Van Aff data set, um, Alzheimer mice. We established the specific gene signature, and here are the genes uh, contained in this signature. And as you can see, you have a lot of uh, inflammatory cytokine, IL-1 alpha, IL-1 beta, uh, TNF, NF kappa B I A, NF kappa B I Z, uh, and you have I E R two, I E R five. So this cell seems to be very inflammatory. And uh, when we look at the, uh, their uh, appearance in this data set, you can clearly see that among amounts they appear during aging. In uh, Sylvine C1, uh, not so much, uh, a bit uh, also. But when you look at Van Hove that Data set and Karen, uh, Karen Scholl data set, what was striking is that if you take the wild type mice, which are also one year old, and you compare the amount of DIMS uh, around uh, among the brain compared to Alzheimer mice in neurodegenerative disease, you see an increase. So these cells appear during aging and they increase even more during neurodegenerative disease. And uh, what was very uh, important for us was one of the DG, CD83. Why? Because it's a um, protein which is expressed at the cell surface, and we could uh, stain the cells in order to see if the protein is there and identify the teams. And uh, of course, we compared the pathways that were up uh, in, uh, in uh, both. And, uh, and uh, then uh, what we saw, of course, is that in DIMS, the pathway upregulated were uh, neuroinflammation and um, inflammatory pathway. You can see IL-10 signaling. IL-10 signaling, the genes that, uh, so be careful when you do pathway analysis, you have to check the genes that are inside. And IL-10 signaling appeared because in, indeed these cells express TNF and TNF gene is uh, among IL-10 signaling pathway. But but in, they were not producing any IL-10, and uh, it was three genes uh, that were uh, not really uh, suggesting that these cells are um, anti-inflammatory. However, the DAM, them, they were expressing pathway linked with phagosome maturation and more uh, cleaning pathway, you know, uh, suggesting that, yes, indeed, they are trying to repair uh, the parenchyma of the brain. And now this is single cell rna -seq. It's very nice. Uh, you are very happy with your list of genes. You are uh, swimming in a lot of information. But uh, then the most important is to validate what you discovered. And uh, here, the issue is that when you work on Alzheimer mice model, it's very painful. You have to wait one year to generate your mice and to use it. Uh, so I did a quick and dirty experiment, meaning I irradiated a mice and I did a bone marrow transfer with the ms 4 s 3 cre rosa tomato bone marrow. ms 4 s 3 cre rosa tomato allows us to follow monocytes uh, and to uh, state which macrophage comes from a monocyte versus from embryonic um, derived. So in the case of the brain, it's great because microglia is embryonically derived. And uh, we were wondering if the DIMS, since they were very inflammatory, uh, uh, we were wondering if they were not monocyte derived. So uh, we irradiated the mice, did the bone marrow transfer. And what is amazing is that if you look at the brain of the mice two weeks after, there is no monocyte infiltration. But when you let your mice age, after two months, you will have 15% of uh, monocyte entering in the brain and becoming microglia-like. After three months, 20. After four months, 30. And after five months, 40% of the uh, macrophage in the brain are monocyte derived and they look like microglia. And uh, so for that, I increased uh, artificially the amount of monocyte in the brain. 
in order for me to sort them, the macrophage derived, uh, monocyte derived macrophage. And here you can see the gating strategy. And we added CD83 in order to see if cells were expressing CD83. And uh, you uh, could observe that uh, regular microglia do not express CD83. And among the CD83 positive cells, we had two type of cells, the ones that were monocyte derived, ms 4 s 3 positive cells, and the ones that were not monocyte derived, ms 4 s 3 negative cells. We sorted the three population, the regular microglia, the CD83 pose ms 4 s 3 neg, and the CD83 pose ms 4 s 3 pose, and we performed bulk RNA-seq. Mm, uh, and uh, in order to uh, to state which of these three population were the closest to the dim signature, we performed GSEA on the dim signature established in the inverse. And uh, the cells that were the closest from the dim signature were the monocyte derived one, CD83 pose, MS4S3 pose. So uh, this uh, suggesting that indeed the dim program can be uh, associated with monocyte infiltrating the brain and becoming macrophages. Uh, then, However, uh, this is a quick and dirty experiment and it doesn't prove fully the point. So what we did is that uh, we uh, uh, use uh, regular ms 4 s 3 cree rosa tomato mice and we let them age. And what we observe in these mice is that if you take a young adult, you have a few uh, deems. And if you take a very uh, older adults, you see an increase of monocyte derived macrophage in the brain. So indeed, DIMS increase with age. And then the crucial experiment was this one. And it was a very painful experiment because we had to cross Alzheimer mice model with the ms 4 s 3 cree rosa tomato mice. Uh, and when finally we had the good genotype, we had to wait one year to use them. Um, so here you can see a regular mice where you uh, one year old wild type mice that contain a bit of DIMS and uh, very few DAM. And when we look at the Alzheimer mice, we observe an increase of DAM as you can see here in blue, and an increase of DIMS also. And what was drastic is when you use a TREM2 knockout mice, you don't have any more DAM, but you have a drastic increase of DIMS. And uh, same for the TREM2 knockout uh, Alzheimer mice. And after having gated on DIM and DAM, we check if, um, if they were expressing MS4S3 and uh, uh, without surprise DIMS, uh, and 95% of the DIMS express MS4S3, so they were monocyte derived. And in the Alzheimer mice, 80% of DIMS were expressing um, MS4S3, so monocyte derived. And when we look at the DAM, indeed, none of them were expressing MS4S3, so DAM, are really cells coming from uh, embryonic origin and uh, it's a uh, fetal like reprogramming. Uh, while monocyte infiltrating the brain will become microglia like, and uh, we don't know yet what is the stimuli that makes them become inflammatory. Just for uh, the pleasure of the eyes, you can see here where the DIMs are located, and they are located mostly in three areas in the brain. Uh, they are located in uh, the uh, hippocampus, uh, frontal cortex, and amygdala. Uh, and uh, if we look at the structure, just to show you, you are going to see monocyte derived macrophage look really like a regular microglia. You cannot identify them based on the shape. They do form clusters and they are, uh, they seem to be in contact with amyloid beta aggregates that are in blue here. Uh, so just, uh, it was just a quick uh, video. And uh, here you can see that indeed they are in contact with amyloid beta. 
Uh, and indeed, some of them are able to phagocyte amyloid beta. Uh, however, if there is a very high density of amyloid beta, microglia uh, coming from embryonic origin, we have higher chance to be in contact with amyloid beta. DIMS are located more in, um, in not very high uh, amyloid beta density area, in intermediate density area. And then we had to validate that in human because mice, uh, it's great, but we tried to check if we could find these uh, DIMS in human data sets. So for that, we use a trapetal data set. We identified some clusters that were expressing some genes identified as DIM or DAM. And uh, we finally came up with uh, two clusters, one for the dam, so it was the cluster 11 up, that shared eight DGs in common with the mouse dam signature. And now you have the human dam signature here. So you see there is some similarities, but there is also uh, stuff that are more uh, specific. So uh, SPP1, Tyrob, GPNMB. Um, and for the DIM, we identified a cluster that contained 15 genes in common with the mouse signature. And uh, this uh, is a human DIM signature that uh, contain also TNF, I had one beta, uh, ZFP36, which is very specific, and CD83. And for the, we analyze the pathway. And uh, here you have the dam human dam pathway, and in bold, in blue, it's a common pathway with the mice pathway. And same for the DIMS in uh, bold and red, you have the common pathway with the mice DIMS. So you can see that they overlap quite well. And uh, finally, in uh, human sample, we uh, performed uh, immunofluorescence. Uh, and here you can see non Alzheimer uh, leptomeninges and Alzheimer leptomeninges. So, what is uh, very striking and that I didn't know, uh, for example, is that in human, amyloid beta is uh, highly dense around blood vessel. When in the mice, you don't have this uh, phenotype of amyloid beta aggregates. In human, you can very really see a high deposit of amyloid beta around blood vessel. And that's why uh, we observe TNF uh, positive cells expressing also CD83 and P2RY12 at this uh, area around blood vessels with amyloid beta. Uh, and these cells were uh, drastically increased in Alzheimer uh, leptomeninges uh, brain compared to non-Alzheimer. And these cells also express AXL. So uh, suggesting that indeed DIMS are also in human brain and they, are, they would be enriched at the level of the leptomeninges. So to conclude, uh, this uh, work, we uh, so um, just to uh, to 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 remind you, microglia come from a yolk sac progenitor. At one point, they will be uh, the appearance of uh, use associated microglia or CD eleven C positive microglia, and they will disappear. So at the end, in a LC brain, you should have mostly just microglia uh, and border associated macrophage, but in aging and neurodegenerative disease, what will happen is that you will still have regular microglia. You will have activated microglia, and this has to be further studied. And uh, some of the cells will reacquire a fetal uh, program, which is similar to the YAM, and they will uh, be named disease-associated microglia. And uh, with aging and neurodegenerative disease, some monocytes will infiltrate your brain and they will have a higher proportion to induce inflammatory uh, inflammation. But however, they are also able to clean amyloid beta aggregates. And I would like to thank, uh, of course, my boss, Florent Ginoux, and all my colleagues and collaborators. And uh, just for you to know, we just published a cell review on macrophages and health and disease. So it's a broad review. So if you want to understand the better uh, macrophages in uh, general, don't hesitate. Thanks. If you have any questions.
Thank you very much for a very interesting talk. Now it's time for questions. I think I might start. And, you know, there are also more brain diseases like brain cancer or any viral infections in the brain. Do you think they might share a common machinery with disease-associated macrophages with the signature or do you think it might go to another? So very good question. So basically in the data set, in Karen Scholl data set, they had also uh, SAD1 mice. Uh, and uh, and when we uh, look at where and they stated uh, there is dam in uh, sad one mice, uh, in fact all the cells were dims. So uh, and there was very few dam. So it's where like I do think that uh, inflammation is uh, happening in a lot of disease. I do think. Uh, um, sad one mice, uh, which are uh, multiple sclerosis uh, mice model, uh, which is an inflammatory disease, uh, is indeed uh, the uh, the CNS is infiltrated with monocyte. We know it very well, and they have this proportion to induce inflammation. Uh, what we do not understand is the border, is the um, blood brain border. I do think the crucial point that uh, we are going to have to to study uh, very deeply is uh, is the blood brain barrier uh, so uh, impermeable and does it open sometime close uh, and how this is regulated because i do think that in uh, this type of uh, disease multiple sclerosis the uh, bbb is the key if it opens and you have monocyte derived macrophage there, they can be reactivated and induce inflammation. So you have a burst of inflammation, resorption, and then maybe the BBB close uh, back and then it reopens. But we do not have good tools right now uh, to study really uh, deeply the BBB. Okay. Thank you very much. We have a question from Michael Schulz. We will ask hi. Hi, thanks, Hi. Anna. Thanks, Emmerich, for the for your great talk. Um, um, I would like to ask you to comment on the labeling efficiency um, of the MS4 um, yeah. uh, uh, yeah. line within the, uh, especially in the BAM population. And is there, or did you saw anything mm -hmm. like any contribution of BAMs directly to your DIM pool? I mean, this obviously is like, uh, I yeah. think one of the, the, yeah. the most interesting question um, out of yeah. the of, out of your study, you know, because yeah. I think, so, it, I mean, just recently also there came so many papers now like showing more and more functions mm -hmm. and rows of BAMs um, or however yeah. you will call them. And I think this is like really interesting also for especially, of course, other, other conditions affecting the brain. Yeah. So, uh, so the MS4 is three Cree uh, Rosa Tomato mice label monocyte at 98, 99%. So it's very high. They do label also neutrophils, but uh, they can be very uh, easily excluded. And from now, neutrophils do not give rise to macrophage yet. So we are safe on that. And uh, for the BAM question, it's a great question. Uh, I uh, I do not I, I do think that monocytes that enter the brain will pass by the BAM state, and then if they enter in the parenchyma, they will become the DIMS. I couldn't prove it because I didn't have the CD two hundred six CRE mice we just mm. got it <laughs> uh, we just got it so we hope to answer this question we really hope to to know if there is this intermediate state where the monocyte become more a bam first and then if there is a signal inside the parenchyma they enter and uh, in fact uh, the dims would be uh, inflammatory bam inside the parenchyma but I cannot answer to you yet. I don't know. Sadly, I, I didn't have the mice. Uh, the mice was getting created. So now we have it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Looking forward. So I'm sorry. And what was the what was the um, efficiency? The the labeling in 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 bumps specifically in ah, by so using the, the MS. So, yeah. The, so the, the MS four. 
Yeah, so the BAM, uh, in the paper, there is a, there is a sub-panel somewhere. Uh, we, uh, so if you take a two-month-old adult, you see that uh, meningeal MAC, uh, so the meningeal one, the MHC2 pose, let's say, uh, have a 20% contribution from monocytes, and the perivascular one have much less three, four percent, okay? With aging, what is gonna happen is that this proportion increase in both. Yeah, but yeah, the yeah. meningeal one will always be higher than the perivascular one. The MHC2 neg uh, yeah. will have less monocyte contribution compared to the MHC2 pose. And uh, however, both of them will have more uh, monocyte, uh, monocyte contribution higher than microglia. Yeah. No. Okay. okay. But yes, they are replaced by monocyte with time. And I do think like they can contribute to inflammation because monocyte is uh, their main role to answer as soon as they are uh, uh, stimulated. And uh, sadly, the brain is not the good place. It's not the place where you want strong inflammation. No, no, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Thank you. And now we have a question from Celine Du. Uh, hello. Uh, no, great no. talk. Uh, I'm actually a student from Dr. Kipnis' lab uh, ah. who also contributed to this paper. Yeah. But I wasn't involved in this project and I, I was using the MS4 mice uh, from your yeah. group. It's super efficient and uh, very nice. Um, I have a question. I'm wondering about your comments of um, people who have done parabiotic study on 5FAD and mm -hmm. uh, reporter mice. I didn't see blood infiltration or blood derived cells contribution into the microglia pool um, mm -hmm. in various models, including type of AD. Um, mm -hmm. What do you think uh, of so, uh, the yeah. source of those cells? So there is different parameters. So when I joined the lab of Florent Gino, everyone was doing percol you know, to, to harvest the macrophages, these uh, layers of percol. And uh, the issue is that the percol select the cells based on their density. And a cell that eat a lot of different material and lipids will not have the same density than a regular homeostatic microglia not eating uh, as much amyloid beta. So you have technical uh, reason. And me, in my study, what I did is that I perform uh, CD11B microbead selection using the Automax. So I'm sure that I'm selecting all the CD11B expressing cells, no matter if they are eating like kg of uh, lipids, I select them and I, it's where I started to see the heterogeneity of macrophage and I move out of the percol because clearly I was losing the heterogeneity. So this could be the reason. Uh, but if they perform uh, microbeads, then it's uh, we had a lot of difficulties uh, with the DIMS. It's it takes a long time. The infiltration is among uh, takes uh, it's spread on many many months. And when you have parabiosis, I don't know if they kept the parabiosis for one month, two months, a year, two years. Like I don't know. So maybe the window is so short that the infiltration is not high enough to detect it drastically. You see? Yeah, I see. You think um, uh, maybe it's loose during the isolation or um, the parabiotic efficiency wasn't uh, great enough. Yeah, or you, you parabiose your mice when they are two months old and you keep them parabiosed one year, one year and a half. And then you you then if you tell me there is no infiltration, uh, then I would be very uh, very disappointed. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I wasn't doing that. I was just checking the literature. I think yeah. people was doing that, like with five AD and uh, UBC yeah. GFP parabiotic. Yeah. yeah, was a bit confused, and also like our lab recently was starting um, uh, scalpel marrow as an analysis source. So 
like yeah, so one this the bon marrow the bon marrow like we we don't know if it's the bon marrow of the leg it could be clearly the skull huh? uh, mm -hmm. the, the monocyte infiltrated uh, infiltrating the brain could clearly come from the skull uh, bon marrow huh? so this uh, it's a great uh, but I, I like yeah yeah but uh, but yeah and after the the labeling of monocyte you know like six three cr one three year t2 it's just for a short time we tried to see but the issue is that it takes time so all this technique of labeling shortly doesn't allow you to track the infiltration you need a model that uh, like the ms 43 cree which is permanent you have 98 percent of your monocyte label and you let the mice age then you can clearly state if there is infiltration of monocytes i see okay yeah thank you and thank you great i think now there will be a question from mr Lindsay. I don't hear a quick, you. Yeah, okay. quick question, uh, more more basic. If people want to be able to project their data sets onto the inverse and see how their their data stacks up, how would we go about doing that? Is there a place where this is a resource where we can access this this map? Yeah. So we are uh, trying to. So right now, you, what you can do is just go with your gene and check. But we want to to create the uh, the one where uh, because the, the inverse was created with a previous version of Serat that didn't allow to project and uh and uh, sadly the reviewing took time and uh <laughs> and the publishing took time it took two years uh, so, so we uh, at the time I, I had two options to redo the full inverse that we did we have the new coordinates and everything where you can azimut but I didn't want to change all the figures in the article. So I, as soon as it's online, I can send the link to you. And this way, you can project your data on it. Great. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And now I don't see any further questions. So I would like to thank you again, both you, Americ and Lindsay, for accepting the invitation and for giving fantastic talks. I hope uh, more people will join and will uh, start moderating more sessions. So the Open Box Science community is uh, open for that, of course. And with that, uh, I think there is nothing else to say. So I hope you all have a nice day. See you soon. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.